hello everyone and welcome back to my channel diamonds and washi my name is katie and if you are new here hey welcome i hope you'll consider subscribing for lots more diamond painting content and if you are back welcome back today i am here with my weekly whip and chat and if you're new whip stands for work in progress and chat just means that we are going to hang out a little bit today and chat and catch up so feel free to whip out your whip and work alongside me today. I'm going to be doing a diamond painting and I invite you to, if you want to craft with me or if I'm keeping you company while you're running errands, house cleaning, or just, just kicking back. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy that you're here and looking forward to spending some time with you today. Um, I, let me let you know first what I'm going to be working on and with. So I'm going to be working on the kit, uh, Becoming, which is from Diamond Art Studio UK and the artist Andrea Tramatolo. I actually, I forgot to grab the image to keep handy to show you guys. You can kind of see it here upside down. This is the thumbnail at the top corner, um, obviously upside down, but really striking piece. And, um, the pen I'm going to be using is from Swampwood Designs. It was from a recent small shop haul. I have not actually used this one yet. Of course, then again, I opened 10 pens in that small shop haul, so not surprising that there's some I haven't gotten to yet. Um, and then the minder, this is actually from Agnes Little Minder, so it's handcrafted from polymer clay, and I just thought it fit the nautical theme. Normally, I don't go for things that have like the skull in them like that. It's a little too dark for me, but I somehow, I just, I didn't mind it too much sort of in this setting, and the, the colors in this one make me think of a black AB diamond, like a 310 AB. Um, it just was a really striking minder. And so I, I picked this one up. Yeah, there's magnets on the back. So there's that. The tray is um, another of the trays that I got to try from Firefly Diamond Art. And this one is the Ignite Plus. And so it's, um, it's longer and it's a little bit different in style than the one I used in last week's whip and chat which i think was the inferno but i just yeah i want to test out all of them and see which which style i really find myself gravitating towards and then i think i'm gonna have some more shopping to do because i'm really really loving them uh so far i'm gonna put that lid to the side then for in my single place i'm gonna be using patty wax this is in mouth-watering strawberries i think i've had this brick for probably th it might even be three years at this point <laughs> and you know I have a lot of different wax and wax alternatives so it just you know it takes a little while to go through them um, and then I'm going to be using Randa's Crafty Corner Putty and my multi-placer and I actually I'm going to grab my my thin metal multi-placer from a different pen and swap it swap it over and I actually had just recently changed out this putty um, and so I hope you don't mind that I'm not going to I normally like to load it with you guys, but I don't really want to pull it. Oh, maybe I didn't change it that recently. We'll see. I'm going to not necessarily yank all that out to change it just for the sake of demoing it with you guys, but um, oh, maybe this doesn't need the washi tape. Hold on. Hold on. I don't want to hurt this pen. Um, let's see. Oh, that's like, hmm, what's going on there? It's like it doesn't quite want to fit, and of course I don't want to hit hurt the pen. Shoot, um, what happens? Is that more suited to the single placer on this end? Interesting, it's like this end wasn't um, widened quite as much. Hmm, okay, we might have to, because I don't want to risk breaking it. Say pl plastic will give where metal won't, and so I could probably get this plastic tip in this end and the metal in the other, but okay, we're gonna pivot. Gorgeous swamp wood pen. We will come back to that because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to risk breaking that gorgeous pen. And I'm going to swap back to the pen I was using before this, actually, which is from Butterfly Effect Wears. And I don't think I've used this one on video yet, but I do need to <laughs> reapply a layer of washi tape. Okay, so um, sorry for the little, little pivot there. I have heard, I haven't tried this, but what I have heard you can do, by the way, is that you can use like a hair dryer to soften up the the plastic of a single placer a little bit and then that'll help it kind of give enough to to fit in here um that's unusual i have not run into that with a swamp wood pen before um there's part of me that, like wants to see because sometimes you kind of have to snap them in but i don't want to risk hurting anything okay yeah that's going to be a future off camera thing to handle because no I don't have a hair dryer right here <laughs> but anyway hello and welcome um 
I am so happy that you are here and looking forward to catching up with you um, this this Monday morning or where, whatever time and day it is that you happen to be watching this. I, I always have my whip and chats go up on um, Monday mornings and um, it's just it's a nice way to kind of close out the weekend. I'll, yeah, I'll film this over the weekend and it kind of helps me just shift my brain back into the regular week weekday mode. Um, I do sometimes get asked what I, why is this not wanting to cooperate today? All of my tools are like, Hey, how about we give you a hard time? <laughs> I sometimes get asked what I use to cut my pl clear plastic cover. I've had this ceramic blade pen for, you see a little tip there, not really, you know, sharp on the skin at all. Um, I've had that probably for three years as well. Never cut through a canvas and I press pretty firmly. So, you know, but there's lots of lots of different options out there for ways you can kind of cut the plastic cover safely. Um, okay, we're just gonna set that there because if I try to put that actual minder backing on it, it's gonna prop that side of the canvas up too far. If I wanted to use this as an actual functional cover minder with the magnet backing under the whole canvas, I would just go grab like an extra flat magnet and use that instead. But anyway, um, like I said, I love doing these whip and chats as I'm kind of shifting my brain back into the regular week, you know, school week with my for my kiddos and um, just sort of regular routine and rhythm for me. And let me grab a color. <laughs> um, guys, really quick. Uh, are you ready to dive into one of the most confetti heavy sections of this piece with me? I knew this would be actually, I had just finished the other section earlier and I was like, actually, why don't I save the other section, this next section to open up until I'm on camera and I can just be like, you guys, it's, this is part of a uh, jellyfish. Like the biggest jellyfish in this artwork is like, it's, it's like head is up here just out of frame because remember we're upside down and then it's tentacles and everything go like all the way down almost the whole height of the piece and it just has so many colors in it you can see up here like look at all of those tons and tons of colors like that's that's what we're working with in this in some areas of this piece so much good Betty but um yeah, no, it's 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 totally fine. So I appreciate you keeping me company while I dive into this um, high high confetti area. <laughs> you'll you'll help me out. Um, so this is a piece that I I've been working on for almost a month now, on and off alongside some other pieces, and the end is kind of in sight. So I had broken this kit down into six rows, top to bottom. And I just have, and then eight sections left to right. So 10 by 10 centimeter sections is what's, what it shakes out to. And I have this and one other section in the fifth row. And then I just have the sixth row left and then I will be done. <laughs> and uh, it is gonna feel like a heck of an accomplishment once I've finished this kit. It has been, um, a larger undertaking than I was anticipating and I don't know about you I feel like that's something that makes a really big difference for me is if is whether or not I've sort of set myself up for um uh if I've like set my expectations ahead of time I feel like that's one of the reasons I'm feeling a bit of a mental struggle with this piece is because I just didn't expect it to be um, I, I, for it to take this long to kind of get through, that is I, like, I always feel bad when I talk about this. So, cause I'm like, I'm not, it's not a slight on the company whatsoever. And frankly, this is turning out stunning <laughs> with all of these color changes and confetti. It's confetti. That's, that has a purpose. It's not, in my opinion, it's not necessarily unnecessary confetti. Um, I think it looks stunning. Uh, but I just am like, oh, I think this would have made a difference if I just personally would have gone into this with some different sort of expectations for how big of an undertaking this project would be. Um, and what's the phrase? I'm blanking on the phrase, like over prepare and uh, like under promise and over deliver, basically. <laughs> so something like that is sort of what I, I wish I would have mentally done. Um, 
so yeah, that's why I say it's going to feel like this is way more of an accomplishment once it's complete. Um, and I am enjoying it seeing, seeing it come together. Just a few sections ago, I was working on sections like with her face and the really striking skin tones. And it looks really good. I showed some of it to you in my month in review video that went up over the weekend. <clears throat> if you haven't had a chance to watch it and you enjoy sort of seeing um, mini, little mini reviews of canvases, uh, I invite you to go take a look at that. Um, I, I realized that I feel like in the month of November, I don't really know that I, did I do any dedicated post review videos? That was just to an individual kit. I don't know that I did. Um, that's something that I really badly have been wanting to get back to here on my channel. It feels like it's, it's something that's kind of been missing, <clears throat> at least for me personally. I know that people tend to get, um, a lot of value out of videos where they get to see kits completed. Um, I actually saw someone comment in, I don't remember if it was the Diamond Art Club VIP group or elsewhere. Uh, they said something like, I wish that as part of unboxings that, um, YouTubers like were required to show <laughs> kits with like at least some of it completed. I just sort of, I sort of chuckled and I was like, I totally understand where that's coming from, but also like <laughs> the, I just, <laughs> please no. <laughs> that would be so, so hard. <laughs> I don't think anyone is actually, I've never actually had anyone say that to me. Like I've heard people, uh, I've had people say, you know, oh, I love it when it works out that you're able to show, um, you know, a canvas with some progress, like with some diamonds down when you've decided to work on it right away. And you include that in your unboxings. Like they, I've had people say that, that, oh, I love when you're, when, it, when you do that, but never anyone, never anyone saying, you should have to do that as part of a sneak peek. <laughs> so again, I understand the sentiment. I'm not like throwing shade, but I just was also like, you never, you never tried to like making uh, YouTube videos, have you? <laughs> and see sort of what the, the workload of that can look like. I would, what would happen honestly is that I would just have like a ton of kits. Just like, I just have drills everywhere and a ton of kits that just would have like one section completed. <laughs> it would, it would, I, yeah, I would never get anything done. Um, but yeah, so anyway, all this to say that I, I would like to get back to having some like kind of individual review videos too, but at least the month in review videos give you a, it gives you a snapshot. You can at least see, okay, here's what some kits look like completed. And, um, yeah, some of these colors we're down to having just a tiny, tiny handful of. I haven't run out of any yet, and I, I don't think I've had any that I'm really concerned that I'm going to run out of. But, um, yeah, I'm just noticing. I'm like, ooh, there's not, there's not that much left of this one. Did I place that correctly? Let me check. Yep. Okay. So, um, anyway, by the way, I didn't even ask. I don't think I asked anyway. I am such a rude hostess. Uh, hi, how are you today? How was your weekend? How was your week last week? I hope that you uh, were able to kind of shift back into the post holiday routine pretty easily. If you sell, if you know, if you celebrated Thanksgiving or similar, um, and I hope that you are well and that you are loving your crafting time. I, um, like I said, I've been, I've been spending some time with this project i i made a lot of progress on dragon spirit which is the kit that i was working on in last week's whip and chat she is absolutely beautiful but i am using that kit as a break from square drill and confetti kits and like this one so i'm not sure once i get to the end of this row when i complete this 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 section and the next one like part of me is gonna want to just sort of keep up the momentum, the end is in sight, and just keep pushing through, powering through, and finish this kit. And then part of me is gonna be like, no, just take another breather before you really buckle down and and uh, get eyes on the prize. So I, I'm not sure, I kinda just like to follow my nose with it all. Um, and that's okay with me. And I haven't touched my Loki cross stitch conversion, unfortunately, in, in a few weeks, but that's on the brain too. I'm curious to hear from you guys in the comments what your approach is 
a diamond painting kit. So I guess I've sort of asked questions similar to this one before. Heck, maybe I've asked this sort of exact kind of question before. But um, do you ever find yourself uh, having a hard time with balancing, you know, the kits that you're working on or feeling potentially like the verge of burnout? And how do, how do you like to balance things? Are you, you know, does it help you to just have one whip at a time and really kind of keep that like laser focus and momentum? Does it help you to have different kinds of projects, like multiple whips going at a time? Um, I know I definitely have asked recently about the like, how many whips do you have question, just sort of more generally speaking, how many whips do you have? That siren sounds like it's getting closer. If you're hearing that, no, that's that's me. That's not, <laughs> that like that's coming from where I am. Oh, they just stopped. Well, I hope that wherever they were going that everyone was okay. Um, anyway, I know I've asked before just generically, how many whips do you like to have? But this is more of a just, I'm curious if, if others experience burnout and, and fatigue from crafting or diamond painting. And what are some helpful ways you've found to balance that so that you don't, you know, actually burn out ideally? Um, I know even with the best of intentions that sometimes it still still happens, but um hopefully hopefully minimally and that's yeah no I feel like I've been flirting with burnout for a few weeks now you honestly you guys are probably pretty sick of hearing me talk about it possibly um but it's that's just sort of a thought that's on my brain and I think I am hyper aware of it because I'm trying to avoid it happening and a little bit seeing like how far I can push it <laughs> to be like but but I would feel really good like if I finished another kit. <laughs> um, I feel an increasing sense of urgency because now it is actually December and I'm looking at the calendar, looking at the projects I have going and kind of wondering, am I going to have time for a holiday kit? Because I'm gonna, I think I'm going to be really sad if I don't. And the really easy solution, of course, is like, well, just start one and put a diff the other projects on hold. The kicker is that I am really bent on finishing this year with no whips going into the new year. That's something I've always tried to do. And it's like, if I have a couple of days left in the month, I will, I will just pull out a snack size or a special drill kit and, and work on that because I don't want to risk starting anything that I can't finish before before the new year so that's a a weird sort of quirk that i have and so it's like i i'm, I'm trying to is maybe i just need to sit down and sort of map out like okay i think that at this pace i mean i should finish this kit in this many days and then my loki cross stitch conversion in this many days and then dragon spirit by margaret morales in this many days and then i hypothetically have than this many days left in a month. I feel like I just went into like word problem mode, which is where my oldest has been living with his homework. He's in third grade. Um, and anyway, that's just, as I was saying that a lot, I thought, am I, am I creating a word problem right here <laughs> uh, without any numbers? But it, yeah, that's almost what I feel like I need to do. So then I go, okay, yes, I would have time to put projects on hold and pull out some kind of holiday kit that I think is gonna take me this much time. But I'm hesitant to do that. I'm hesitant to think like, oh, for sure, kits, you know, a kit is gonna take me this amount of time to finish because it's the holidays. Like we're, we're um, gonna be trying to get stuff done to get ready for Christmas. I've got Christmas shopping to do, Christmas cards to finish putting together and ordering. And of course, like getting together with family. Oh, I just saw Kate just had a whip and chat go up. I just got the little alert on my phone. Kate is diamond painting in Dr. Pepper and was in the Cyber Monday countdown live with me and Lindsay. Um, and that was really fun. I'm going to go ahead and just hop on this tangent because I've been talking about project pacing and fatigue. I looked at the clock and it's been 18 minutes and that is way too long to just me gripe about that one topic so for my own sake I'm gonna go ahead and hop over here so the Cyber Monday live was so much fun when I filmed my whip and chat last week I had filmed that on Saturday night and as of that time I still hadn't decided if I wanted to do a Cyber Monday countdown live because I was sort of like well I just like is that something people would really want um 
Am I gonna feel like I have the energy for it? It's just gonna, I know it's gonna be a different vibe because the release is gonna be so late. But as it turned out, we, yes, we ended up doing one and it was really, really fun. Um, Kate joined, joined me like she had last year and Lindsay was there as well. And um, we just, it was, it was fun. And Cyber Monday, Diamond Art Club really, really had my number. I was, I, I did way more damage on Cyber Monday than Black Friday. And that's really funny to me considering Black Friday had a hundred kits and Cyber Monday had 25. Um, but yeah, so, um, I also did plenty of damage at small shops, like a ton. Other packages have started to arrive and I am just, I'm scared. Not because of like, oh no, what's my husband going to say? I have to hide packages from him. Cause that's not the kind of relationship we have. He's very much like you do whatever you need to for your channel. Just like, he's like, I suggest keeping up with the spreadsheet. So that way it doesn't take you by surprise. Have I kept up with the spreadsheet um, this year for this year's taxes? Um, <laughs> no. Um, this year, oh my gosh, I don't even want to get into that. But anyway, I uh, it's more that I'm scared for sake of space. We genuinely feel like it's just, I have a lot of diamond painting stuff that is just taking up a lot of space. We are seriously consider considering renting a storage unit. Um, yes, I have tried to like de-stash a lot. Um, but there's also just, you know, we also could use it for other things anyway, because we just, as our kids are getting older and they have some more stuff and, um, it just is making our, our small space feel very cozy, <laughs> very cozy. Um, I just am incredibly thankful that we, that we own our, our condo and, all of that and so I'm not I'm very 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 grateful and I choose to like have that kind of attitude but I'm also like this space is so small what I wouldn't do for just like a, an, a fourth room like a fourth bedroom that could be like an office slash guest room <laughs> slash craft room <laughs> um would be amazing but that's okay that's okay we make do and we just might have to get a storage unit but I really wanted to make a point of supporting a lot of small shops and I feel like I did I have a lot on the way that I am looking forward to sharing with you including like I got a lot of holiday specific things um various accessories and things and I'm really excited when I'm able whenever I'll be able to do a small shop haul for that stuff that's gonna be that's gonna be really fun and I know my small shop hauls tend to be kind of uh delayed but this no these I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get them up before the holidays I'm gonna at least grab the stuff that is holiday specific and make sure I have those those unboxed for y'all but um yeah <laughs> Uh, speaking of just being uh, grateful and, and everything, I have to say that I am incredibly thankful for you guys. I feel like I just have a magical, kind and sweet um, YouTube community here. I feel like you guys are so, so, so sweet and gracious. Um, I was, you know, you guys have heard me kind of beating myself up a little bit or just you know, talking about how I'm I have a little bit of a complex over um, like the slower pace of diamond painting and trying to make sure that like I'm doing it all and trying to like make everyone happy. Um, I'm such a people pleaser and I am always just so touched and so blown away by the the outpouring of kindness and support and reminders that like I need to practice like what I preach to everyone else like I'm always telling you guys to be kind to yourselves and I need to make sure that I'm following my own advice and I always I just I appreciate that because you know there's especially when I kind of venture too far outside of um my sort of like circle here just as far as like my videos and the comments on my videos as much as I like try hard to keep up with them that is um I just sometimes see like some snarkiness and some just I don't know like just hostile attitude type things that I'm thankful that that 99% of the time is not a thing here I do get that sometimes and I've seen you guys actually like respond and go to bat for me really hard like when those pop up before I get the chance to like before I see it and delete it um but that's also that's very sweet of you guys too <laughs> but yeah so just a little like warm fuzzy here as I'm 
as we're getting into like the holidays and sort of reflecting back on the year, I just want to say that you know, as much as this channel has grown and like continued to grow, I just, I, I'm thankful that I have really lovely, wonderful people as um, subscribers and viewers and um, yeah, so just thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, warm fuzzies aside, <laughs> other things that are going on. Um, I, uh, okay, lots of Cyber Monday shopping. Yep, I actually just got a really big package. I'm, I just, sorry, I was referring to my little list of notes here. Um, I just got in, I'm like staring at it now, a really big package uh, from Diamond Dots. Uh, and that unboxing I'm gonna try to have for you this week um, because that has been highly, highly, highly requested something in particular from there. And uh, so really excited to get into that, but oh my gosh, the size and the weight of that box. And I thought, oh, and this is just the start of everything that's coming. That might be the biggest thing that's coming aside from my Diamond Art Club like Cyber Monday order, but um, yeah. <laughs> But that yeah I'm looking forward to a lot um I uh, have noticed the past the past few days in particular as especially as we're shifting like into the holiday season um that I feel like I'm having some changes for the better as far as my mental health goes and um so how that really came about was that I was pulling out the Christmas tree to put up this weekend because I thought okay it's beginning of December let's go ahead and put the Christmas tree up and I have a very it feels like just a really complicated relationship with home decor and have really ever since COVID um and I feel like I'm just now sort of being able to pinpoint why that is and where that's coming from um but what happened was that I had gone out to the garage where we have you know, if you live in California, that's where your storage is. We don't have basements because earthquakes. And so most people use their garages as their storage. And a lot of people don't even park their cars in the garage because they're using it all for storage. But anyway, I had gone out to get the Christmas tree down and I was like, okay, I know that in one or two of these totes up here, over here is the tree skirt and the tree topper and, you know, the stockings and, and whatnot. And I was kind of looking, and on that set of, you know, shelving, we had you know, a number of different totes that were labeled for, you know, different seasons and whatnot. Um, and then there were just a bunch of, like, miscellaneous things sort of shoved, like, on top of, on top of the totes, just kind of wedged into various spaces, like, various home decor related things that I had bought over the past few years. I was like, well, you know, I like the way that this looks, like, maybe I'll sort of get back to, you know updating my home decor sometimes. It's something I used to take a lot of joy in, um, especially even just swapping out things seasonally too. Um, but just really for the past few years, that's something that has felt overwhelming and difficult and just something that I have a really strong aversion to doing for some reason. And this year instead, as I was getting the tree down and kind of looking at those totes, I just thought, you know, let me kind of tidy up this space over here. Let me look through some of these things and see, you know, if there's anything that I want to just go ahead and shift right into the donate pile um, or things that I might want to bring inside to do like decor wise, or let me just poke my head into a couple of these totes and see um, what I've got going on in here. And I just was sort of struck by this, this feeling that I remembered having a lot before, which was just this sort of excitement and desire to to even do this, to to do some more home home decor type things, and then I kind of realized that um, I was I was very emotional as I was realizing this is something that I wanted to do again, and I thought I think the problem has been um, not only depression, like that being a huge factor, but also. Um, the the lockdown fundamentally changing how I view my home space and viewing it as a space where we were stuck for a long time and um, how it just I'm still unpacking all of this honestly because this was literally a revelation like 24 hours ago and I am looking forward to unpacking it more with you know therapists this week yay weekly therapy um, 
But I just I think that is a big part of it because when I look at the timing of when this kind of when this stopped bringing me joy, that's what it was. And I think that it just yeah, being stuck at home, um, that just it complicated my relationship with how I wanted to change out my home decor. And I don't I don't know totally where that all is gonna gonna lead as far as why that is and how to sort of. Uh, change that thinking but it feels like that's something that's going to be happening and I'm really happy about it like I feel like this year I don't we're not just going to put up the tree I think we're actually going to get ornaments on the tree which admittedly because again depression and complicated emotions surrounding my home um is that's just something we didn't do we we weren't able to do let's get ornaments on the tree it was just like we have a pre-lit tree we got it set up and that's okay that's enough that's I'm gonna be kind to myself and really be okay with that is if that's all I can do then that is okay um but yeah so I just thought I would share share those learnings with you guys and um I think probably it's a combination of well time really I think is a part of it but also I've now been on um a new medication for about a month. Yeah, because I just got my refill uh, for about a month. And this is the first non-SSRI that I've tried for my anxiety and depression. And I do feel like it is having an impact. I feel like there could be room to go up, but I actually had my first appointment with a psychiatrist this week. My primary is the one who originally gave me the this prescription. But I thought, you know, we both agreed like, yeah, maybe since I'm having a tricky time with it, like going to a psychiatrist who this is what they specialize in is probably the right call. Uh, So I'm going to talk to, you know, the psychiatrist this week and um, maybe bring up like, I know that this is this was a starter dose. My understanding is there is room potentially to go up or other things we can do. You know, what do we think? Because I've had virtually no side effects aside from. Uh, a few days worth of headaches at the beginning, but those did go away. I've been headache free for um, a couple weeks now. And so, you know, I feel like the side effects have been really minimal. And so this could be a good fit if it if it is maybe already helping. And I think also I have to credit my therapist, <laughs> you know. Um, I am really glad that I wasn't, Im- I didn't immediately panic after the first session where I was like, ooh, I don't know if this is really a good fit for me. Um, I'm glad I stuck it out and made myself go, okay, let's try, let's give it like a few weeks maybe um, just to see. And now I feel like, okay, no, this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, someone that's going to kind of push and nudge me a little bit harder and ha- give me kind of more direction. Um, and I'm, I'm really definitely feeling that. So I'm, yeah, I, I think that the timing is good to be getting in a better mental space especially going into the the holidays uh, for sure but um yeah so anyway as far as um other things that are going on this past weekend Adam and I went to his work holiday party which it felt a little early to me but I guess you know it was it's December it was it was December 1st it was on Friday and his mom came up and watched our kids so we could both go thankfully you know Micah was healthy and everything and um we really try to spread out how often we ask them to help with watching the kiddos because we know it's you know a drive for them and usually they want to go ahead and just like drive back they live like an hour from us even though we're always like just you could stay the night like we'll set you up in in Connor's bed and and stuff um and Connor will sleep over in our room he loves it but I think usually they're just more comfortable sort of sleeping in their own space which is totally fine but they're always very very happy to come up and help but I just never want to take advantage either um or put them out and have them just sort of feel like they can't say no but anyway so um his mom came up and watched our kiddos um and the party was in it was actually at the office I hadn't seen uh, the office before um Adam had sent me like pictures and video of it which sounds strange but no like it is something else it was like you walk in and you're like is this like what it would be like to work at google like it's just it's a really really cool workspace and a little bit like adam are you sure you want to be working remote all the time do you like want to come up here more often because i wouldn't blame you for wanting to spend more time in this space it's just a really really neat um neat space i always forget the name of the city that it's in but it's near um 
Is it Marina Del Rey? I think it's Marina Del Rey. Um, so it was a bit of a drive, but they had really gone all out, like with like the food and the drinks, like their appetizers and like an open bar and they had lots of entertainment. Like they had a mentalist slash magician that was going around and doing really like fun, just en engagement with like groups of people and doing these like tricks and stuff. They had like some, um, uh, like some tarot card readers, they had some karaoke, they had a DJ, and this, again, this was all at the office, and the space, it, it totally worked for that. Um, and and then Adam, um, well, we just, I was going to talk about what then Adam had to, got to do this weekend, but I was just going to say, it was really nice to be able to just go out, the two of us, and have a date night, and we kind of got all like dolled up um, because the the, hol the dress code was uh, holiday and as it turned out people kind of dressed all over all over the place like some people were very casual like in jeans and some people were um, very holiday like cocktail dress sparkly I had gone into it with a couple of outfit options one being um, my runner-up dress for the Taylor Swift concert uh, which was like a black dress like kind of a cocktail dress but it was like a little more body con and uh it was it's gorgeous and it had these like sheer uh black sleeves on it and and the whole thing was kind of covered like lightly in these like rhinestones um these clear rhinestones and it was a very I mean if you're a Taylor Swift listener it was like very very like midnight's era uh and absolutely gorgeous but I just wasn't sure that I was totally feeling like the body confidence to wear that dress to like the first of the work parties that Adam's had at this company. Um, and so I don't know if this is it. I just, I don't know if I have this in me. Like I might save this for a different date night in a different setting. Um, but instead I had, I had gone to Torrid, which is kind of just my go-to store for, they have a lot of plus size like fashion options kind of across, across the spectrum as far as different styles and I knew that they would have some like cute holiday stuff and I went and they had this um this like amazing like gold metallic top that I thought that screams holiday <laughs> like that's totally perfect uh for this and ended up wearing it with um they weren't leggings the the line at Tory they called them Ponty pants and they just they were kind of like leggings but a million times better like they were a bit sturdier I guess they're designed to be just generally more work appropriate but they just I, I felt really really comfortable in them like I felt good about how they they looked on me so I felt really good about like dressing up and uh, us getting to go out and you know mingle of course the introvert in me is like oh man I'm a little nervous about all the all the small talk with a bunch of people that I don't know, but um, we did fine. And Adam knows that about me really well. So it wasn't like he ever abandoned me or anything. Um, but we enjoyed getting to chat with people and uh, just enjoyed lots of delicious food and, and everything. And then um, Adam had a short film project that, oh, what was he doing on it? Was he assistant directing? I can't remember what he was doing with it this weekend. Um, but he was going to be gone basically all weekend and uh, was going to be like in Santa Monica for it, which was around 10 minutes from where the work party was, but uh, over an hour from our home. Now, thankfully, Adams, uh, the company actually provided like Uber vouchers for everybody um, just, you know, for to and from even. But we ended up driving up together in one of our cars Um and then I took an Uber home and Adam just stayed up there and crashed at a friend's house Friday night, which meant that he got more sleep before an early call time uh, for the, the film project and and also had a car up there and neither one of us had to do anything like tricky to try to um, get one of us home or get like a car home. So it worked out really, really well. And I was really, really thankful that they, they offered that as a, as a courtesy and an incentive to like everyone to like be safe. Like if you want to drink, drink, but, uh, here's a way to make sure that you're doing so totally safely. So it was a really fun night. <laughs> and, um, it was interesting though, because it, it, there's a really different, 
vibe between LA and Orange County and I really was kind of feeling it a little bit I was like ooh, yeah not in a bad way at all but just oh it's different <laughs> sort of uh people in their um not just like their fashion but just sort of there's a different and Adam knows exactly what I'm talking about too and if you live in the area you might too but it's just it's a different sort of energy that people have and it was I mean, it was fun to like go visit, <laughs> but Orange County is like a little bit, a little bit more suburbia, I think. Anyway, observations of, of living, living here for uh, 13 years now. Um, so yeah, yay date night. I don't know that we'll get another one this month because it's very, very, very busy. So that was, that was just, that was wonderful. <laughs> it was delightful. Um, and uh, the boys went back to school this past week and did pretty well with that actually um we had a couple of tough days where micah really didn't want to like even just walk out the door i think he was just tired and um i don't know he's just he wants to be such a night owl we always put him to bed like at a good time but i think sometimes he just sits and chatters in his bed and then he loves his sleep like the kid could sleep so 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 late um but he's doing really well with speech and the speech therapist had actually given us some ideas for things that uh, she found that were working, different things she was trying with him. Um, she said he did really, really well when she switched from just really giving him verbal prompts to actually writing things out and having him read and then respond. Um, and so I'm going to pass that on to his teacher just to say, like, oh, here's another another thing that the speech therapist <laughs> discovered that seemed to work. Um and so I'm always like, yay, we found something else that um, uh, that might might help him. <laughs> uh, he also had, uh, the school had an award ceremony this past week. I guess they do in like each know, trimester or quarter or whatever. Um, and Micah got an award for, for academic achievement, which to me is so adorable for like a kindergarten class, like a special kindergarten class. Like I, I think it's so adorable and just so very very sweet too so that's that was really sweet and fun um and then connor's been doing well with school too and we're seeing like his you know his grades and kind of how he's adjusting to being in a gen ed classroom it feels like it's um like he's adjusting in a lot of ways which is is good too um so yeah they they definitely they missed adam a bit this week he called before they went to bed and we talked to him for a while because he wasn't gonna you know the shoot wasn't gonna be done for today until you know late enough that he was gonna miss bedtime but of course he called and they were just so cute and so delighted to talk to him and excited to hear he was gonna be be here tomorrow when they wake up and when they get home from school so um they just they, they love their dad <laughs> and I'm glad that we can can make weekends like this one work where he's able to like go, go and do his his film stuff on the on the side and we make it work and it's not I mean it's it's definitely not every weekend that he's gone for the whole weekend we try to minimize that a lot but um this is one of those projects that had been on the books for a while and he's got a close group of you know friends uh, that they always help and support each other on each other's projects and they've been amazing with him and his projects and so um, you know of course when it was like okay now it's you know this friend is doing this project he was like of course no I'm there <laughs> um, the um, we we started the boys with their advent calendars on December 1st uh, I was on it this year where I had picked up their advent calendars from Target, I think like at the beginning of November, or maybe it was late October. It was when my mom was in town. Um, and so Micah has one that's Cars themed, like Cars the movie. And uh, Connor has one that's Lego themed. And it's like, okay, so it's one that is part of the Lego line that is, like you can tell they're marketing it to girls. But... I'm like, there's like, I know this is the one that Connor is going to like more and I don't care. And I really don't think he's going to care that it's, you know, it's like the Lego friends line or something like that. Um, but I'm like, but it has animals, like it's like a veterinary setting and, um, it's like, it was a really cute inclusive set where it had like a gal that is an amputee and, um, it just, I was like, okay, so like Lego's doing a lot of these things well, but like 
why does this have to be in my mind what looks to be pretty clearly marketed to girls like boys kind of like cute animals <laughs> and stuff too um and I was like you know that's the one I'm going to get for him because that has the things I think he's really going to enjoy so and of course like he he has enjoyed it so <laughs> um so we start on their advent calendars Connor has been asking lots of questions about Santa and anytime I try to say that I don't know the answer to a question um he's like well you can just search it up on Google that's how he says it you can search it up on Google and I'm like oh, okay today the question of the day was when is Santa's birthday I said that's a great question when do you think it is and he said well I thought it might be Christmas I said, oh, that's that that seems like a, a good possibility. I said, but then again, if it were if it were my birthday, I don't know that I'd want to spend it like delivering a bunch of, of gifts. Like that seems like a lot of work. And Connor's like, yeah, that's a good point. You should search it up on Google and see. Did you guys know that apparently Santa's birthday is on March 15th? Okay, so now we know. I did not know that. Did you guys know that Santa's birthday was on March 15th? Um, we do not have any elves like elf on the shelf we don't have any elf visitors and to my knowledge neither of my children are aware of of the elf and i'm real i'm i'm good with keeping it that way if you're a parent and you you have an elf that visits you that's your friend i'm very happy for you but i'm okay that we've slipped under the radar <laughs> if they asked like i it, that might change but uh, I might I might see what we could do, see if we could get an elf friend to visit. But I, you know, I'm just keeping my mouth my mouth shut on that one because um, the there's there's a lot of work that goes into it when you have an elf friend visiting. So I'm trying to keep this very um, like very friendly for any kiddos that might be overhearing, just in case you never know you never know. But uh, we have also <laughs> just really been enjoying this holiday season in general where uh, our neighbors and people around us have really started like going all out with putting up their Christmas decorations and lights. And this year, Micah especially is very, very um, enamored by the Christmas lights when we go out. Um, our next door neighbors have like one of those projectors that project lots of like cute Christmassy images on their garage. Um, and... Like, my kids, anytime we, like, open the garage to go anywhere, they both run out to stare at it. If it's, like, in the evening, you know, where you can see it. And they're like, oh, Micah's like, it's the Christmas garage, which is so cute. And um, we were driving earlier to pick up dinner, and Micah would just declare anything that had Christmas lights on it. This is the Christmas, insert word here. And he's like, look, it's Christmas bushes. Look, it's a Christmas tree. Or look, it's a Christmas window. And so last year, we, we did have a little fun tradition where we drove around and um just around our near nearby neighborhoods we just drove around and looked at the christmas lights and found some really cute like christmas light displays and the kids really really enjoyed it but mike is even way more into it this year than he was last year so i'm like ooh, we might have to do that a few nights this year because it's just it's so sweet to see things that they're really into um it's really really cute really cute um okay so as far as i love these little recaps that i do now at the end um where it's like what am i reading watching and listening to i don't even remember how this came about i think when i was just sort of jotting little notes for myself about what i could talk about in a whip and chat and there was you know a couple of weeks here and there that i felt like my um the things that i had to talk about just it felt very light and so i was like well if i have time we'll talk about like oh here's What's been on my reading list or ooh, some music that I've been listening to or something. And then it just sort of evolved into like, oh, now this is something that I always send my whip and chats with. Um, so reading wise, I have been in a little bit of a reading slump. I haven't been reading as much this past week, um, but I have still just kind of been doing a little bit of an Akatar reread. So Court of Thorns and Roses, and I'm in the middle of the third book, which is... Um, a court of it's like it's Akawar, a court of war and ruin um and i'm really enjoying doing the reread because i feel like i really do absorb a lot more uh the second time around like whether i'm like reading listening or watching uh something it's something just how my brain works like the first go around i just don't absorb nearly as much and i feel like i miss a lot 
Um, but the second, you know, and subsequent <laughs> viewings or listenings or readings, I, I feel like I catch a lot more. Um, so I've definitely been doing that and it helps to sort of know where this is going and how it might connect to other things. And so I find myself catching a lot of hints or winks here and there and going, Oh, I wonder if this is, if this is going to point to this or that no spoilers, I promise. Um, and so that's been fun. I, I would like to pick up iron flame soon i feel like i'm really really risking running into spoilers at this point but i just i haven't really been feeling it you guys honestly as far as all of these things like watching reading listening i feel like i'm doing the thing where it's like i'm just poking things i mean like where's the dopamine where's where is it where's <laughs> what's gonna bring me enjoyment it feels like i'm skipping between things going no like i don't really want to listen to that i don't really want to read that i don't really want to watch that even like my usual things, like even Supernatural is not scratching the itch for me as far as like a TV show in the background goes. And I go, oh, oh, I don't like these phases where it's like nothing sounds good. <laughs> like nothing sounds like what I want right now. Um, it'll pass, but it's just kind of like, man, I would normally be like, oh, it's a sign of depression. But then I'm also like, but look at all these ways like things are going better. I know it's not that cut and dry, but um. I just like, I don't know. I think I just am, maybe I'm just itching for something new, which speaking of things I've been watching, I have scratched the itch with something new as I was kind of poking around going, no, I don't want to read that. No, I don't want to watch that. What do I want to do? And so I just, I, I open up Netflix and just start swiping and scrolling like this. Do I want to watch this? Like trying to find a new show or something to catch my eye. Um, I was kind of hoping that the BBC Sherlock would still be on there, but apparently they took that off at some point. I don't know when that was. Um, but I, I was kind of like, Oh, I kind of hankering to rewatch that, but it wasn't on there. And a Google search was kind of, it was like, Oh look, it's on Amazon prime. I checked prime video. No, it's not there. I have to buy it. I was like, is it not streaming anywhere for free? Is it just over on like BBC's? Do they have a proprietary app now for streaming? Because I'm sure it's there if it is. Um, <clears throat> so I keep scrolling on swiping through Netflix and it kind of paused and the Witcher caught my eye and I had had the Witcher on my list to maybe watch for a little while. I was kind of hesitant um, because I just thought, "Mm, I think this one, it might be too gritty for me. It might be too much. I don't know if it's going to be my cup of tea, but I had come across a meme or something that was referencing it that made, that had kind of put it back in my subconscious or like back on my brain. And so then I saw it, I thought, okay, yeah, this is the one let's try this. I watched like four and a half episodes in one day yesterday. Um, and there were a couple of times where I was like, mm, no, too much. I think I'm going to have to stop. And I just like looked away from the screen or like I did okay. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. But I I think I'm going to at least try to get through the first season and kind of see where it's going. And, and we'll see. Um, I mean, because I'm the person that couldn't watch Game of Thrones because it was too gratuitous. And I feel like this is probably like flirting with that as far as 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 being that extreme but I don't I don't know because I haven't seen Game of Thrones I just know what I've heard um but yeah no it's especially like knowing that Henry Cavill was um a huge like he was a gamer was a huge fan of this like storyline and this character and I feel like that comes through where you can just tell like oh no he knows this character and is this character that's something that i've i've heard a lot of people talk about because i think apparently he got recast after the third season like i don't know if he stepped back i don't know all the details but a lot of people were like no 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 no, no. like no one is ever going to be able to replace henry cavill as this character but anyway i don't know but i did find a show that was scratching like the itch <laughs> gave, gave the dopamine um and then as uh, we also, Adam and I, the other night, when I finally, finally had an evening where I was like, Adam, I don't need to do any filming or editing. I don't have anything time sensitive because all of Black Friday week and Cyber Monday um, was just, it was basically, it was like, he knew and he was super supportive that like, okay, basically all of my spare time is going to be dedicated to, you know, filming and editing and uploading and all the things that like are also tied into that for these videos as well as attempting to keep up with and and engage with comments and questions that came up related to those. 
But there was a night last week where I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. And I was like, there was a movie that you had brought up watching that we didn't get the chance to watch last week. I was like, what was it? Do you remember? And he's like, oh, yes. He's like, this movie that he's like, you didn't catch in theaters, but I saw it in theaters and I really think you're going to like it. And that was um, the new, the newer, like the newest <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons movie with Chris Pine. And it was delightful. I loved it. I think because I am a gamer, I, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons ever, but there's so many references to like things that are sort of you know, ubiquitous between like Dungeons and Dragons and general like just RPG games, like video games, that I was like, this is amazing. Like all the things that they're nodding to and referencing uh, without like being cheesy and heavy handed. It was like, Someone that loves video games and views them like with affection made this movie. <laughs> and I was so surprised. I was not expecting to to enjoy enjoy it that much. But of course, like Adam was right. He's like, you're gonna I, like, I really do think you're actually gonna like this movie. I was like, okay. So uh, that was a fun, a fun like little date night in movie that we got to watch together. And um, yeah, so as far as listening to goes, uh, even that, I'm kind of like, eh, I'm not really like, like Taylor isn't, Taylor Swift isn't, I don't know, like I'm not wanting to listen to as much music just in general at the moment. But if you didn't see Taylor Swift fans, um, she did release You're Losing Me on streaming. And now I finally have that instead of <laughs> in my, in my library, instead of having to like look it up on YouTube and listen to a version that someone's uploaded there before it's gotten taken down. So, oh gosh. So as far as what's coming this week, I have, uh, I want to get that Diamond Dots unboxing for you. I might have a sneak peek. I'll at some point probably have a first look of my, what was supposed to be my sneak peek from last week, which of course got caught behind the Black Friday and Cyber Monday orders. Um, but it wasn't a big deal because I don't think like they, they only had like one or two kits even in for sneak peeks that last week anyway. Um... But that, and I have something this week. We'll see if it comes in on time. I, you know, it is what it is. I'm okay with just sort of taking a breather. Um, and then I don't know what else I'll have this week. Maybe I'll kind of see if there's any kits I could do review, individual review videos of and get back to that a little bit. But I'm hoping it would be really wonderful if I could finish this kit this week. I don't know, maybe I'll not take like a whole week off, but maybe I'll just let this week be a lighter video week. Um, Cause I haven't really taken a vacation or anything since since Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, I don't feel like I'm necessarily about to burn out on making videos, but I don't want to, I don't know, it's like I don't want to risk that either. So I don't know, maybe I could just let this week be a little bit lighter without taking the whole week off. I don't know, stay tuned. But I'm going to go ahead and um, wrap up this whip and chat. If you made it all the way to the end, is there an octopus emoji? Is there an octopus emoji? I don't know. If there is not an octopus emoji, um, how about just something nautical? Anything nautical? I know there's a jellyfish. I know I asked you guys for a jellyfish emoji a few weeks back when I was doing this kit in the whip and chat. Uh, so yeah, octopus if there's one or something else nautical. Um, and let me know in the comments how you're doing and what you've been up to. Do you, Did you do lots of damage on Black Friday and Cyber Monday? <laughs> uh, other question that I asked at the beginning was um, just, do you find yourself risking ever risking burnout with kits that you work on? And how do you find a balance and find... Um, you know, good ways to sort of avoid that burnout if that's a struggle for you. But um, loved everything that I worked with today. I'm a fan of this tray. Um, I liked this one and the Inferno, so I don't know that I necessarily have a preference, but I like this one a lot too. So yay, Firefly. I'm going to go do some shopping. <laughs> anyway, you guys, thanks for spending some time with me today and keep me company while we worked our way through a lot of this confetti. We made a good dent in it this hour. Um, yeah, let me know what you're working on, what, what you were up to while we were whip and chatting today. And have a really, really wonderful week. In fact, a week that is as wonderful as you are. <laughs> All right, my friends, I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye. Bye.